Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com in today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we looked at the Consumer Confidence Index, an indicator which is meant to give insight into how the consumer feels about the economy, which normally affects consumer spending. In today's lesson we're going to wrap up our discussion on the top level of fundamental analysis with a look at an indicator that combines many of the leading components of the indicators we've studied up to this point uh, into one indicator known as the Conference Board's Index of Leading Economic Indicators. So let's get started. Okay, the Conference Board's Index of Leading Economic Indicators is made up of 10 sub-indices which tend to move ahead of the overall economy. Um, the index is published around the 21st of each month and uh, you know it's an interesting one because as I talked about a little bit in last lesson uh, it includes many of the uh, leading components of many of the indicators that we've studied up to this point and it's designed to uh, predict the business cycle so to speak so there's a lot of insight provided into this uh, interesting indicator here um, the first component of the indicator is the average hours uh, worked by manufacturing workers. Um, the reason why this is uh, seen as a leading indicator is, <coughs> excuse me, before hiring or firing uh, employees, manufacturing firms will normally increase worker hours uh, when demand uh, requires or cut back worker hours when uh, demand falters since most uh, manufacturing laborers are hourly uh, it makes them it easier for them to do this uh, than many other firms so that's why it's a good uh, leading indicator there okay the second component is the average number of initial applications for unemployment insurance um, uh, you know, it's probably obvious here that if the number of applications for uh, unemployment increases, this means more people out of work, which means, you know, people will have less money to spend, which means a weaker economy and market sell-offs, all else being equal, okay? The third is the amount of uh, manufacturers' new orders for consumer goods and materials. Uh, an increase in this amount uh, of new orders should indicate a pickup in demand and vice versa. Okay. The fourth is the speed of delivery of new merchandise to vendors from suppliers. Um, this is a leading indicator because an increase in demand can cause an increase in delivery time as suppliers have trouble keeping up with the new demand and have to add staff and those types of things to do that. Okay. Uh, the fifth is uh, the amount of new orders for capital goods unrelated to defense. Um, another way of looking at uh, new orders, which should be, which should lead the business cycle, as pickups and new orders indicate rising demand, which should, you know, mean, uh, you know, increases in, in economic growth and rising markets, all else being equal. Okay. Uh, the six is the amount of new building permits for residential buildings. Uh, as builders try to anticipate demand, new building permits normally uh, move higher ahead of demand, uh, which is why this is considered an economic indicator, you know, because it takes, uh, I guess, seven or eight months to build a house is probably an accurate estimate. Uh, you know, so builders have to move ahead of the curve, so to speak, to uh, anticipate demand and, and try and move ahead of the curve to, uh, to anticipate, uh, you know, uh, slack and, and demand so they don't build too many houses, okay? Uh, the seventh is the S&P 500 index. Um, as we're going to learn in our lessons on the stock market, the S&P uh, includes the stock prices of the 500 largest companies in the U.S. And as we've learned in past lessons, markets anticipate uh, making changes in stocks that make up this index a leading indicator of, of economic activity as uh, market participants such as ourselves try to anticipate uh, what's going on it, it makes that a leading indicator there uh, the eighth is the inflation uh, adjusted monetary supply or m2 it's referred to uh, in simple terms uh, this is watched you know as it's a measure of bank lending which increases ahead of economic expansion and decreases ahead of contraction uh, which is what makes this a leading economic indicator okay uh, number nine is the spread between long and long term and short term interest rates. Okay, as we learned in our lessons on interest rates, normally the shorter term the loan, the lower the interest rate one will pay. Okay, this is considered a leading economic indicator as when the distance between 
uh, when the distance between the short-term interest rates and the long-term interest rates narrow, uh, this is indicative of a situation where market participants are anticipating Fed interest rate cuts, which normally come during an uh, economic slowdown or vice versa. Okay. The tenth is consumer sentiment. Uh, this indicator, you know, measures how optimistic the consumer is about the economy. Uh, and this is the, uh, you know, part of the consumer confidence index that we talked about yesterday. That's the leading uh, part of the three components of that. Okay, so when the consumer feels that the economy is not good or is not expecting it to be good several months from now, they're going to normally pull back on spending, as we learned yesterday. And if they feel like it is going to be good or is good. Um, they're going to increase spending, all else being equal, which should result in economic growth there and vice versa. All right. So as with all indicators, we cover the, what the market focuses on with this indicator. When this indicator is released, you know, also depends on what's happening in the market at the time. So the best way uh, to learn how to incorporate this indicator into one's trading is to follow the indicator in real time. So with this in mind, like with all the other indicators we've studied, I'll be posting a discussion piece on this lesson on informedtrades.com uh, after the next release. Um, you can find a link to that lesson on Informed Trades if you're watching this on YouTube uh, in the description section of the video there. So you can follow that discussion. Okay. I've also posted a link to the latest release, which you can find just below this video if you're watching on informedtrades.com or in the description section if you're watching on YouTube. Okay. That's our lesson for today. And that wraps up our, our session on uh, economic indicators. Uh, in tomorrow's lesson, we're going to round out our uh, course on the basics of trading uh, with a st look at how to choose uh, different markets to trade and then build a trading plan after that and a series of lessons that goes into that. And then we'll start getting into specific lessons on specific markets such as the Forex market and the stock market. Okay, so we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and good luck with your trading.